Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the remove all method in the ArrayList class. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, and select begin. Okay, I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the array list remove all method. Basically, um, the remove all method removes all matching elements in the current array list instance that match all elements from the derived collection list argument. Okay, so basically what we've got is we've got the method signature here for remove all, right? It takes a single parameter of collection type or anything derived from collection, right? And then basically we've got the generic diamond syntax there with a question mark in there, right? And then, of course, the C, which is just merely a reference variable, local copy there, and returns a true type, okay? Now, the collection portion of the parameter list means that we can pass in any object that is a subclass or subinterface of the collection interface. The collection interface lays the groundwork for the collection framework. The collection interface defines many essential abstract methods such as add, clear, remove, and of course, remove all. Now, each and every subclass or subinterface will inherit these methods and any concrete subclass must implement them. So now we know that a collection must contain a group of elements or objects, right? Hence why we can pass an object instance that is derived from the collection interface. I'm going to take a minute to come out here to the Java documentation. <coughs> Excuse me. And here's the, the collection interface here. Um, it has all these subclass subinterfaces, and you probably by now recognize, for example, the list subinterface, because I use that, uh, you know, basically to create, like, for example, the arrays class, and then the aslist method method returns back a list type there. And then the implementing classes here, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them here. Here's a array list right here. Um, and what do we know about each and every one of these subinterfaces and subclasses is that they inherit all of these methods from the collection interface, right? Like you can see here's add right here, here's clear, you know, contains everything like that, right? Um, here's remove all right here. So basically what I'm trying to get, get through here is that, um, you know, we could create any type of these things and maybe we'll, I'll do a little bit of that in the tutorial there. I'll pick one of these things and we'll just go through and um, make it, right? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and come back to here real quick. The, uh, for example, the, the diamond syntax or chevrons, right? Portion of the parameter list is a generic wildcard of unknown type. Now I'll be going over generic wildcards and wildcard bounding in future tutorials after I've completed my ArrayList series. But for now, just be sure that the object types contained in the elements of the current instance of the ArrayList match the objects types contained in the collection list arguments. So for example, if you have an ArrayList that you've specified uh, will only take, for example, string objects, right? Don't try to pass it a collection uh, up here. Uh, something that's derived from the collection that contains, for example, string builder. It just isn't going to fly, right? Okay, but I'll get into that a little bit later on there. So uh, the C portion of the parameter list merely represents a local copy of the reference variable, which basically points to the collection object there. So let's go ahead and come down here and highlight all the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move the browser off screen here. Well, let's go ahead and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. All right, let's go ahead and open that up here. Uh, I'm going to type in uh, Java C, which is a Java compiler command, and press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. Now, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the MD command, right? And I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create one for you. Change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, array list remove all, okay? I'm going to change directories to that folder. I'm going to do notepad array list remove all.java. That's going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Okay. 
control V to paste that in. And this is a fairly simple class here. So um, we're importing java.util, that whole entire package, everything in there, because I'm using ArrayList collections. I'll use some other stuff in there too as well. So uh, main method entry point. First thing I'm doing is just uh, basically declaring this uh, array list states reference variable here, and it only takes string objects, okay? String um, objects for its elements. Now, I'm using the collections um, class and the add all method. I'm invoking that. The first parameter that you pass it basically has to be the um, reference variable to our array list here, right? And then Everything else after that is basically var args, so we're just going to populate that array list with these elements right here. Um, and then I'm just going to display that to the console. So let's go ahead and just compile this here. Let's put our screen, Java C, compile that, Java to run the Java virtual machine, and we want to invoke the array list remove all method there. Okay, so. In that first thing here, we just go ahead and display the, you know, the states array list here to the console and then in the next thing here I'm going to create a, a collection object right and that's that that's going to tie in here to the the parameter here collection right that's an interface so uh, collection type right and then um, string so basically how I was saying, you know, our array list contains a string, our collection should contain a string here too. And I'll go over that with the, you know, generic unknown and bound wild card bounded types and everything later on there. But for now, just, you know, if we had an integer up here, do an integer down there. That's all I'm saying. So just match the two. Um, okay, and then remove these will just be basically the, um, thinking boy pulling a blank here reference variable there and then arrays as list returns uh, the arrays class and then the as list method basically builds a um, it returns back a list type right and under the collection under here you can see that list is a sub interface there right and what it'll actually do is it'll actually make an array uh, um, this particular object right here will actually become an array list there behind the scenes all right I got these commented out so we'll ignore those for a while there and then I'm going to display, remove these to the console there. So you can see remove these I've got uh, populated with, you know, Alaska and Alabama right up here, right? Okay, then I'll invoke the remove all, passing the remove these, which is that, you know, as the argument here. And then display what states now is after the remove all, right? And so... After that, it's equal to California, Colorado, Hawaii, New York. Now you can see in Alaska, I had Alabama in there twice. You can see it, it actually removes both instances of Alabama, both elements, right, of Alabama out of there. And so that, that, differs, that differs quite uh, quite a bit from the remove method, where the remove method, if you specify, for example, Alabama, it only removes the first occurrence, it'll leave the second one in there. So just something to keep in the back of your mind there. I kind of find this, prefer the remove all there, you know, well, depending on the scenario, really, it doesn't much matter. Okay, so then the next thing I'll do is just display this to the console there, and then I'm going to invoke the, let's go ahead and scroll up on this just a little bit here. Invoke the clear method here, which will clear out our array, and then I'm going to do the collections add all again with states in here, and go ahead and add all those back in. <coughs> Right, and then display that to the console. So there's where we're up here. And so better, basically, you know, remove all. We don't need to necessarily, you know, um, create these sort of things. I mean, I really like to just use, you know, if I'm hard coding something in there and we want to remove it, arrays as list, just pass this as the parameter. You know, it's going to just basically create a, a temporary object there that'll match that. So this is just a, a you know, a more cleaner, better way to remove, for example, Alaska or Alabama there, right? So this time I didn't remove Alaska too as well. So you can see that after remove all, then we've got Alaska, California, Colorado, Hawaii, New York. Okay, let's come up here and play around with this, for example. Let's um, back to this over here, right? So list is a sub interface here, right? So we could, um, we could for example, <clears throat> come in here and let's go ahead and save this. 
file, clear our screen, rerun. Okay, so in this particular section up here, right, um, you know, we specified a list um, reference variable type, right? Still match the string here. And, uh, you know, basically that that works out good there because list is, a, is you know, a, um, a sub-interface. Now, we can, in also addition to that, you know, array, array list here, um, is a subclass here, right up here, right? Uh, there's a array list there, okay? So let's go ahead and create a, uh, another array list here, like this, right? Let's save this. And I'm just gonna comment all this stuff out in the lower portion just to keep the, the screen a little bit more clear there on the return value. Okay, let's save that. Quit our screen, recompile. Okay, so you can see that works too, just as, as an array list being passed in, you know, as the argument there to, to the remove all method there as well. Okay, um, let's come over here to the collection thing here. And um, based on the interface collection here, we know that we're going to have add as a way to populate any of these various different implementing classes here, right? And um, so we can go ahead and add, add some elements to any one of these. And let's just... Well, I'm just gonna go, let's just pick one. How about priority blocking queue? I've never even used a priority blocking queue. I don't have any clue what it does, but I do know it has an add method and it's a member of the collection class, right? Um, it looks like it's uh, part of the java.util.concurrent package. So let's go ahead and um, come back over here and let's import that package. Oops, wait, Jelzy. java.util.concurrent.star. Okay, and so priority blocking queue, I'm just going to control C on that, and um, basically what I'm gonna do is make this a So you can see priority blocking queue contain, you can pass it an element, right? Specify it as basically like it's um, class type variable, or a type variable there, right? So string, remove these equals new. And then uh, let's do a new priority blocking queue, right? And that's the beautiful thing about this is we don't even need to know that um, Basically, here we go, we can just add that, right? I use the same same reference variable name here, right? And we'll just add this, right? You know, as a matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll just, um, we'll remove a couple of other things. We'll remove uh, this particular case, we'll do Colorado and California. All right, so. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. Let's uh, compile this again. Oops, I missed a semicolon right here. All right, let's save that. Let's clear our screen, recompile, and run this here. Okay, so there is our first one right here. Remove these, displaying California and Colorado. And then finally we got, you know, California, Colorado are no longer in the array list there. <clears throat> so that's a beautiful thing about the collections framework is we've got all these, these various different members of it there. I shouldn't say members, it's like, why is that? But every, all these things that are derived from the collection interface here, we don't even need to know what exactly all these things are. We just know that they will inherit um, uh, the add method, right? And that they, they are basically collections of objects, right? So a collection represents a group of objects known as its elements. So that's basically the cool thing about the whole collection and collection framework there. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let's see, I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to discuss in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, close out of this. And that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.